No, but as I said, like, legitimately, Gama was, like, a really fucking good tournament. I just had a ton of fun playing Melee again and chilling with everyone. It's, like, in downtown Toronto, so it was close to everything. Not that I went out much, but, yeah, I just had a really good time. I was really tired, um, and the schedule was kind of weird on Saturday, but overall, it was really fucking good. Great matches, uh, great times, good times, good times. It was just really fun to, like, be back and playing Melee again, even though it was rusty. I like still got two really fucking good wins and one great one like beating Ginger I was surprised by since I was so bad in the Falco matchup warming up and then uh, obviously beating Zane in like a fucking terrible matchup and 3-0ing Hungerbox especially beating Hungerbox twice on Dreamland was is something I'm really proud of because I usually struggle really hard on Dreamland imagine getting rust being rusted and getting third place at a super major it actually happened last year too at like full bloom and there was some other tournament where like I was rusty but I, so I became a little bit more consistent but I became worse my peaks were lower but I did well in the matchups I actually practiced because before the event I was like in my head I, pre I had time to prepare for like Zane and HBox those were the only two matchups I really had time to prepare for and I you know did did my shit in that so I know that with a bit more practice I can do even better I got fucked by Mango though for sure like we played friendlies before and like both of us knew that I just sucked in the matchup. <laughs> we played like on Sunday after the tournament and I was I was already doing so much better. Like it, it was like a little bit sad how <laughs> But that's just kind of it like if you're a little bit rusty, it shows way more in tournaments than in friendlies when you don't have pressure on you. Obviously it's a lot easier to play when you when you don't have pressure. Yeah, I'm really proud of beat H Box after such a long break. I didn't get to practice matchup too much, but a little bit. Beating Edgebox this year is definitely my priority. I I failed to save melee last year, and I already feel like I'm doing better. Yeah, not laser when he's on the side platform made a big difference. Do you think Box underperformed this tournament? Is this he missed easy edge guards? Well, it's pretty common that when you get red super hard, like I made a really good reads when I recovering a, a couple times. It's very, very easy to then get super frustrated and start missing stuff. That's just how humans work. It's like in basketball, right? Like if you sink a couple threes, like you're usually on a hot streak and you keep sinking them. Um, so it's not as easy to say like, oh, did Hungerbox just suck? It's like when you get a couple of good reads, it's very easy to get into their head. Skirt, lol, thank you so much, man. Not to mention just that like, I made some really good recoveries that like they were, he didn't miss like super easy one. The only bad one was like, um, obviously the one on Dreamline where I was technically dead. And then also he didn't rest much. I think that's because he didn't really get the chance to. Um, I was really good at avoiding rest and pound. Melee getting, Melee's getting crazy views. I, I, I was saying that Melee's doing so fucking great. Oh yeah, my recovery were insane. Word. Versus Zane were insane, dude. I'm already thinking of swapping from that matchup though. I play Saint so fucking hard and I'm still really close. Like some idiots were like, see, it's not that bad. It's like, no, I'm just fucking godlike, dude. <laughs> what? Does that mean that, you know, Pikachu destroys Marth like 7-3 just because Saint can never beat him? No. I mean, he's better than Saint. And I've been better than Saint, like, I just lost one set against them. No, I don't really think uh, playing Fox long term versus Saint is viable. If Saint gets to the level that I am at, I, I think I'll lose like 80% of our sets. I, I missed a couple of ledge techs actually. It was a thing I had going on the entire weekend. I fucked up a lot of random ass up east too, against Mango and Ginger. Marth's falling 80 20. I think it's like 6 4, 65 35. Uh, it, it's, it's getting worse for sure. Mute King and Zane can both improve a lot in that matchup. Zane, especially, they, they both have kind of the opposite problems. If you were able to like do both, where like you would play off the edge and YOLO and cheese as hard, well as Mute King while also being as solid as Sane, it would be like so fucking hard. Does Marth have bad matchups? I think so. The way I see melee top tiers, it's like Puff is the best, but she's unconventional and slow and not entertaining to play. But she doesn't basically lose this no matchup. She might have a couple even ones at worst, but stomps a fuck ton of characters. Then it's Fox. Fox beats the bad characters really, really hard if you know the matchup, but knowing the matchup is very hard for Fox. So like even Fox versus Ganon, 
Falcon. Not Falcon. Falcon's not bad, actually. But Fox against Samus, Pikachu, even DK, like characters like that can win against it. Luigi. But if you know the matchup, they're pretty bad for the other person and you're playing properly. Fox against the top, top tiers right now in the current meta because everyone's so good at punishing. Um, I would say Fox loses slightly to Falco, Marth, and maybe Puff. But he does better than both Falco and Marth versus the most of the spread. Like he does way better than Falco against Floaties and he does better uh, than Marth against anyone below like the top four so like he does better against peach chic maybe not peach peach is about the same but peach ices falcon um yoshi samus pikachu all those characters so i still think fox is like it's like puff just mostly because of jet ease of use if tournaments were perfect ran better schedules if there were more puff players i think she would honestly be in the same tier but just slightly higher right now it's like puff marth fox the slightly slightly below falco like still in the same tier in my opinion and then uh, next tier it's like chic peach falcon in some order but i still i think most melee top tiers are very very well balanced in general pp thinks falco beats puff i mean i don't want to beat that guy but like he doesn't even have that good of a record against hbox if you look at lifetime and i mean their last their last set was not pretty at all what was that it was evo he, he got pretty stomped silly, last time. Wait, fuck, this is the wrong one. I, I personally think it's bad, mostly because of Dreamland. Falco doesn't really have a easy way to play a Dreamland unless he super camps. This is like EVO 2015 though. But even then, like this was before HBox really, you know, became as good as he is right now. That said, you can definitely, it's a fine matchup. I just think uh, Falco, it's about like a 6-4 for a uh, puff. Either way, I think it's very hard for people to know since he doesn't play any good puffs um, and he doesn't net play. Yeah, I, I think it's like a 6-4, like Falco has to work harder. Thank you, Nan, do too. Yeah, such things as like wave dashing out a shield better, shield dropping, reaction tech chase rest. Uh, there, there's a bunch of things that like favor puff in the meta that weren't really common before. To be fair, shield drop is good for Falco too, but he doesn't really need it much against Puff. If that's 6-4, then Samus players play 8-2 matchups. I don't really think Samus loses any matchup super hard outside of um, maybe Puff. To trade off, I don't think Samus wins any top tier matchup. Maybe. The only only characters Samus really has an, even an argument to win is Fox, Falco, and I guess Marth. Those are all actually possible. Um... I think they're more likely close to even, but they're effectively slightly Samus favored uh, in the current landscape because it's way harder to get practice versus Samus. Like it's never going to happen. Oh my God, it may, it may look so different. I mean, look at this fucking recovery. <laughs> jump back side B. <laughs> it worked, dude. Is being a top player overrated or underrated? Um, I I wouldn't say it's either. Um, being a top player is fucking amazing. I love being a top player. I love the the amount of things melee has taught me. Um, that I get to stream for you guys instead of go to work like Jenny does tomorrow. Um, that I get to be my own boss, that I get to meet so many different people and play and play legitimately the fucking best game ever in front of so many people. Oh, look, it's me. But it also comes with a lot of drawbacks. And I think if you hate those drawbacks a bit more than I hate them, um, it can easily turn to straight up ter a terrible, terrible job. Like never any days off, never getting a consistent routine or, sl or sleep schedule. Always being at a disadvantage because I live in Europe, both stream-wise and Smash-wise. Um, almost never seeing friends or family. Time away from my girlfriend. Not being able to enjoy Smash as much as a pure hobby in many ways. Since so like, like it's your work, it can be a little bit harder for some people. For me, it's not too hard because I love competing. But it's harder to just fuck around guilt-free. Like if I play secondaries, in my head... If I play them for like over 20 minutes, it's like, you gotta play your real shit. You're always competing as everyone else. 
even when you wake up, if you lie down in bed an extra hour, I know that HBox, Mango, everyone else is either streaming or they're practicing. So you never really get to rest. Whenever you look at social media, it's always your job. I can't, if I look at Twitter here and I tweet like, tweet, this is my job. Like I can't just, you know, like being, getting views, posting on Instagram, it's all your job. It's all part of the job description. And I think that stresses people out a lot. And like watching a Melee stream, I can't enjoy as purely either because, you know, well, I should be streaming Melee instead or what are they doing? But yeah, that said, I think those things are completely worth it because I like you, you can legitimately not put a price on how much I love competing and um, playing this game, for just trying to become better and better as a human person and as a competitor. But I think most of the people that I know um, don't like, I think a lot of people that don't really know me, but like watch my stream maybe, or um, maybe meet me once or twice. They're like, dude, you have it so good, man. Um, but I feel like most of my close friends are like, like I see the value in what you, in what you do, but I also would not want to be you. Like, and I think that's, just the truth like if if being if playing video games and doing what you love for a living what's easy or actually that good then literally everyone would just be trying to go for it no one would ever quit smash um everyone would just be trying to make it you know your work no one would be getting side jobs do you think jenny would say that you have it good or bad um she would say i have it good but not amazing stuff like that Jenny also wants to compete and do content for a living, but I don't think she wants to, she never would never want to travel as much as I do.